Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Champ Buster in the 5-minute pool on ICC. Alright, it's Scandy time. We had a game with E4, E5 already today, so let's whip out the main repertoire. This is another guy I remember playing in one of my very early videos. This is Stefan Christensen from Iceland. And if I recall correctly, we also played a Scandinavian in that Blitz game. Probably one of my first, like, 10 videos or something I ever posted. So this time I'm playing the Queen D8 line. There's been a little water under the bridge since we last played, and let's see what Champ Buster has in store against this line. A6. So if you followed my tournament in Dallas, I played the black side of this position a few times, most notably against Sam Sevian in the first round. Yeah, A4 is not supposed to be that good because it weakens the B4 square, and black can kind of dispense with the usual uh, postponing of uh, this knight development and instead go right for the c6 square, because b4 is so nice, especially in conjunction with bishop f5 attacking c2. That said, I probably won't play knight b4. Well, actually, I might play knight b4 here. I could play e6 too, but yeah, let's do this, because he's going to have to play bishop b3 in reply, and then I can play e6, and I have good control over d5. So let's just treat it like this. Given that Grandmaster Christensen brought the knight out to e2, he might play for... Yeah, knight g3 and then f4. So I wonder I wonder how I should react to that. Bishop e7, f5, take, take. Or should I play queen d7 and try to control the f5 square? Maybe that's the best option. Let's do that. This is an unusual square for the queen to land on in the Scandinavian, but given that he doesn't have a knight prime to come into e5, I make the queen feels comfortable here. And maybe I can castle queenside? Not out of the question. If he wants to add more emphasis behind the f5 push, he'd have to, in this position, use his queen, like queen f3, but that leaves d4 kind of tender. All right, so he's going for the throat in the center. Interesting decision. Okay, I can play bishop c5 check. I'm just going to do check. that because... It's a developing move with tempo. How can you turn that down? Now, do I castle or do I do something else? Taking on d5 I think is going to end up poorly for me because he has f5 at the end. So I do not believe I want to do that. But if I castle, he's going to take on e6. And I may have to sacrifice something. Well, maybe I can castle. He takes e6 and I just take with the f-pawn. He takes d7, I take with a king. Looks kind of weird, but I am keeping everything together. Let's do that. Because if I take and then take on d1, I fear that he's just going to win a pawn. Like de6. Oh, he's playing it this way. Hmm, this I did not expect. Is that any good, though? Alright, so which way to take? Clearly I have to take, because i got to save my bishop. Do I take with the bishop or the knight? Hmm. You know what, I'm going to take, or sorry, with the pawn, I mean, not the knight. I'm going to take this way, even though this kind of locks in this guy. Because I have a good feeling about this resulting position. Bishop e7, maybe? Or rook over. Let's go rook over. So get out of the pin, and I expect him to take. And then try to play it positionally. He's inflicted these triple isolated pawns on me. If queen f3, I could play rook e3 if I want. Or maybe f4 and try to open lines. Hmm. Dynamic position. He's going to try to blockade the f4 square. Okay, that's valid. Also, he threatens c3 with this move, trapping my knight. So maybe rook e3? Coming in. So that if c3, I can come to d3. Yeah, let's do that. The rook should be relatively safe on this square, supported by the bishop.
if knight f4, I mean, he's got a nice blockade going, and my bishop is utterly terrible on g6, but what is he really accomplishing? Yeah, so he goes to d4 instead. So now f5 is under attack. Should I double? If I double and he takes... Mm, I don't know if those tactics are working out for me. I could take on d4, but then he takes and he's hitting this and this. And the rook. <laughs> Not to mention the rook. Rook e5 maybe, but rook e5 he can bring the knight back to f3. Okay, I'm just going to let him have this pawn. I mean, he can take it either way he wants. I don't think I could have taken on d5 because, yeah, he was going to have knight f5 as well. All right, what to do here? Take once or no? I'm leaning towards no. Let's just bring this back. Attack the knight and see where this goes. Probably back to d4, but then we can take d5, can't we? So this pawn could be a gunner. If things are working out the way I hope they do. If queen g4, probably knight takes d5. I think that would work. So queen f3. Still knight d5? Knight d5, rook d1, though. Ah, but then I can trade everything and I have knight e3 at the end. Don't I? That's weird, but I'm going to try it because I'm running out of time. So yeah, I'm anticipating a line. Rook d1, bishop f5, knight f5, rook takes. And then I can fork him on e3 at the very end of that line. Hmm, maybe he could have played this different. I don't know, but we'll find out. Ah, he has rook e1. Uh, I still got to go for this. Uh, he didn't see it. Okay. Well, that's good for me. <laughs> yeah, he could have played rook e1 and pinned me on the e-file. Now he's going to make some move around his king. Yeah, like that. Rook e5, perhaps? Let's go there and offer a trade. If I can win his b2 pawn at the end of the line, I'm happy. And if rook c4, I can take b2 with tempo, so that looks good. Yeah, let's do that. And then maybe c5, c4, real quick, c5, c4. Hmm. I'm going to let him take these kingside pawns. I'm going to pin my hopes on the uh, queenside pawns. Bishop f7 is probably going to be played. Yep. Okay, so let's bring the rook in. Let's activate, attack this pawn. Let's sharp end game. His h pawn is going to be strong as well. I'm not sure which pawn is faster right now. Possibly his h pawn because my rook is going to get in the way of my own pawn. Check. So his, his rook, though. We can't discount that. Check. Hmm. Okay, let's do this. This is going to get weird. Hmm. Check. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to just try to promote, purely. Ah, he's got that move. Time that I warning. didn't see. That's a good response. Yeah, I think I'm losing. Yep, that's over. Rook c8 was nice. Yeah, I didn't see that. Because if he played like rook a8 check, I take it. He promotes king up. And yes, he promoted faster than me, but I'm still going to promote the pawn. So yeah, rook c8 is nice. Hmm. Sharp endgame. Maybe I shouldn't give him the h-pawn. 
But I figured with my knight on b2, I kind of had to try to make use of the queen side. Very tough to say. We were both in time pressure. He did miss rook e1, though. Rook e1 would have been way easier, I think. If he plays rook e1 here, and then knight takes f5, he takes e8, wins the game. He'll win that ending. Okay, let's go over this. So we had this line of the Scandi, queen d8, Scandi with a6, looking to go b5, and then c5. Yeah, and I mentioned that I thought a4 wasn't the best. I've seen some sources criticize this move because white does give up control of the b4 square. And I think knight c6 followed by knight b4 is a good response. I'll have to check my move order, though, because, I mean, this plan that white adopted isn't rocket science, like playing knight ge2, knight g3, and then f4, f5. This is a common Scandinavian plan wherein white will develop the knight through here, as opposed to putting it on f3. Let's just see what the computer thinks for now. So knight b4, bishop back, e6, all fine. Queen d7, also fine, fortifying the f5 square. Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling the middle game was fine for me. Check. He played d5, I gave a check, and then castled. This move surprised me. F5. I thought he was simply going to take here. And I was thinking about taking this way. And then if he traded Check. queens, taking with the king so I could defend e6. But the computer says even better would just be to take on d1. Why is that so good? Bishop takes c2. Okay, so I can ignore the f7 pawn and the e6 pawn and instead play for a counterattack. Because if he takes, I'm on his rook here. Okay, that makes sense. And what if rook takes d1, I do the same thing, like trade Check. and then take on c2? Yeah, that also looks good because he doesn't have time to take here with this bishop under attack. So based on that line, it looks like Champ Buster made the right call by playing f5 on move 14. Sacking a pawn, but then arguing that he has compensation. Hmm, knight g4 is better. I didn't even look at knight g4. Yeah, so if he takes here, I can even afford to take back. That's kind of neat because I have threats like knight f2 or knight e3. And with queen takes d8, I have queen h4, threatening mate on h2. So the engine is loving black's position right here. Okay, yeah, I wish I would have done that. <laughs> that's preferable to letting him take and triple isolate my f-pawns. Like, that's not nearly as good. So I played rook de8, he takes. Still an edge for black. White has to prove compensation for the pawn. Rook in de3, better is to play h5, according to the computer, and try to go h4 and bother his knights. Okay. Yep, valid idea. So I played rook in, and he went knight here. Yeah, my reasoning for this is that if c3 I could come here, so that kind of begs the question, doesn't it? If h5, what if just c3 trying to attack this knight and trap it? Because I don't have a good flight square, but black can keep pushing with h4 and attack the knight. And white's knight also doesn't have any squares. So h5, kind of a counterattacking move, addressing the threat of c3 with the creation of a threat on the opposite flank. So instead I did this, knight d4 here, and f4 is better. f4, rook takes f4, and then knight takes d5, hitting the rook. Aha. Okay. Yep, yeah, that looks good. And then after bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, I think black's pair of bishops should be worth something here. They should trump the knights at the moment. So I doubled up. White took here, and now the position's roughly equal. This was a gamble, taking the pawn on d5, but I saw I was getting low on time, and I was looking for something a little more forcing, and I had my sights set on the d5 pawn, so I just went for it, although I do end up in a pin on my queen on d7. And this whole combo looks to be faulty, but if c6, why well, can just play c4, right? Bishop takes f5, knight takes f5, knight e3. Really? Wow. And if rook takes d7... I was thinking take here, but even better apparently is to take on f1. 
with a completely nutso looking position where black is down a piece, but somehow the computer thinks it's fine. What in the world? What happens if black just or white just retreats the rook? Rook d1? Is rook e1 a big threat? So if here, knight d2. Wow. And suddenly, hello back rank. Hello e1 square. <laughs> so attacking the queen and also the bishop and threatening rook into e1. Safe to say there's zero chance of that happening in a blitz game, but maybe the position is a lot richer than it seems, even if I allow this pin to happen. So I just went for this instead, because I thought that I would get this fork at the end of the line. But yeah, he just overlooked that he could play rook e1 and pin my rook. So my opponent kind of believed me when I, when I went for this whole combination. And now I should be doing well again. Suddenly the evaluation has swung back in my favor. Black is up a pawn. I'm up a pawn on the king side. It is a pretty weak structure I have over here, but I'm also attacking b2 and I'm threatening mate, so he has to take a timeout to defend that. Here I played rook e5. That looks pretty good because I think this endgame would be pretty bad for white if I get to do this. Then I'm up a pawn and my king being on the queen side to help escort these pawns could be a big factor. So he played rook c4. I took... And something went wrong here after because I just lost this race. Hmm. Yeah, already here, it's not so good. Okay, so probably I need an improvement after rook h4 hereabouts. So the engine says h5. It would be nice to save my h-pawn because white's h-pawn is their most dangerous pawn. If they win this, this is an outside pass pawn that I don't have a great chance of being able to stop. So for me to play h5 makes sense, but I just thought he would take on f7 and this pawn would be a goner anyways. a5. So playing a5, that means that, yeah, if, if white takes, then we could have a swap and then I take with the knight here. And it's a race and the computer seems to think that black is going to win this race. Maybe because my king has a chance of coming over and being able to stop the h-pawn. And then I can try to use my 3 to 1 advantage on this wing. Hmm. Yeah, I probably should preserve that h-pawn, now that I think about it. Versus just letting him go and take it. I put a lot of faith in my c-pawn, but as it turned out, it wasn't fast enough. Yeah, I'm probably busted here. We're close to it. Check. He played well. Bishop e6 Check. and then rook h8, pushing my king away. He ignored the attack on the bishop, because I don't have time to take his bishop. If I take his bishop, he's just going to do what he did in the game, and unstoppable h-pawn promotion. Check. Yeah, I'm just losing here. c2 and the very accurate rook c8. Stopping me from queening. He'll just sack his rook if, if I queen, and this h-pawn is going through. Touchdown. So nicely played by Champ Buster at the end in this endgame. Possibly this whole sequence was fine. I mean, I was speculating maybe I could have played the opening better somehow, but it wasn't the opening's fault that I lost this game. Yeah, even up through, like, queen d7, the computer says this is all fine for black. He let me play bishop c5 with tempo, and then I castled. f5 was probably a smart sacrifice for him. This was a big moment. Had I found knight g4, I'm liking my prospects. As played, I, I did kind of struggle with the triple isolated pawns, although this too should be okay. So, yeah, fun one. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this game, and I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye, guys.